Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'll be sharing with you the live recording that I did over on the Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 12th of February 2024. So I'm coming to you from my shop full of beautiful fabrics and I'll be answering all of your sewing and dressmaking questions and giving you lots of advice and inspiration on pairing different fabric and pattern combinations together and just generally having a good old chat about fabric and patterns and sewing and dressmaking. So you'll hear me read out some of the questions and comments that come in live during the session as well and if you are watching here on YouTube and you would like to ask me a question or if you've got anything to contribute as well that you want me to read out in a few your session then just leave it in the comments section below so i'll switch over to the live recording now i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you very soon good evening everyone hello and we're here again for another live q a with me from the gng shop floor it is the 12th what are we on now the 12th of february so thank you for joining everybody and i hope you had a really lovely weekend and are ready for an hour of fun fabric and sewing chat from the shop floor. Yeah, I've got loads of nice things to show you. They're all out beside me here. And I've got all your questions ready. So if you want to ask anything as I'm chatting away, then please let me know. If I know the answer, I will answer it. And if I don't, I can add it onto my list for next time. But I do have some updates and things to share with you first of all. So those of you that are on our newsletter list will have seen that we released our first kits of Sewing Society kits of 2024 on Wednesday. And you guys totally love them. I, I think they're pretty much sold out. We, can't, we had like, I think so, uh, we had like a little, tiny little bit of a surplus, but I forgot to check just before I came on whether there was actually any left. So, but I'm going to talk to you about them because we do have lots of other fabrics that are really good for the patterns that we chose as well. Um, and of course you can get my top tips video on um, making those projects as well. So the first, I'll, I'll talk about the one that I'm wearing, first of all, and um, I'm wearing it with the Helen's, this is the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls. This was a past kit. I'll come on to that. The new kit that we released is the classic Tilling the Buttons Coco Top, which I'm wearing underneath it. We had it in four different colourways um, and it's just a really lovely classic Breton style top. It's great for this time of year. And we chose a cotton French terry, which has just got a nice thickness to it. It's not too light, it's not too heavy. And we've added some little extra details in it, which you can find out how to do in my top tips video. So we gave you in the kit some nice contrasting cotton twill tape so that you can just use it in the back neckline it just gives it a really nice finish and helps to stabilize it there it's not in the front it's just in the back and then also at the split at the bottom as well and um, then we show you how to put that in too so it's just a nice little extra touch and um, to make your Breton top really special so I mean I th we usually have like a little bit of the fabric left over so if you're desperate for the fabric that was in the kits then you can email us and we can add you to the wait list for that but I do actually have two other fabrics which we've had for a long time um, and they are also really good for classic Breton style tops so if you are if you're taken by the style and I mean who can you ever have too many stripy tops no is the answer to that and um, then you might just want these anyway and um, they come in two different colorways but they're like a reverse so this one is the wide striped navy and white cotton loop back jersey fabric so it's the it's the same weight and thickness so it's french terry it's got those loops on the back and then yeah just a sort of wider stripe rather than the equal stripes of this one and um, and then there's also like a more kind of a crew and navy colorway of it there um so so yeah they are just available in the shop now they're just we've, they've just been restocked they're just like a regular stock fabrics but also very good for breast and cell tops is the wide striped accrue and navy cotton look back jersey fabric um and then we do have loads of different colors of the twill tape as well like if you wanted to add that little detail on um, and get my top tips video to do that so that is the 
Coco, the telly and the buttons Coco top. Um, and then yeah, the, the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls, that was a kit a good few years ago now. Um, and I've got it on in the navy enzyme linen cotton, which do I have that exact one out? I don't think I do. I have other um, other colours of the enzyme linen. We've also just restocked loads of colours of that as well. Um, and, and yeah, it's just a really nice nice little dungaree pattern which I only just fitted in Um, you know it's designed to be kind of like loose around the waist and the hips anyway but my growing tummy right now um, made getting the zip up a little bit tight um, but yeah I still got on anyway so that is the Yanta and then the second kit that we released is another jersey one we're go definitely going for comfort at this time of year this is the so over it Georgie dress um, which is really, really lovely. Um, if you look at the kit listing, then you can see the modelled samples of that because it definitely it definitely looks better on than kind of like this. Um, but basically, it's like a faux wrap dress. So you've got, you know, it's got that sort of V-neck, but it's like wrapped over. But then it just goes into um, then a waistline here that's got fram elastic in it. So it's stretching. You can either have a gathered skirt or you can have um, like a flatter skirt that's a bit more A-line. So it depends how much sort of fullness you want around here. And it's really good because you put fram elastic in the neckline as well, and then it stops it gaping. So it means that it doesn't sort of like spill open or if you lean forward, it doesn't kind of spill open. So it's really good. And you can obviously customize the sleeve length it's really easy. You can customize the length of the skirt as well. Um, and it's a really lovely one for all sorts of different types of jersey. So we used a cotton jersey and we also used a bamboo jersey in the kits. Again, we probably will have like a little bit left over. So if you're desperate for the fabric that's in the kits, you can email us. We've got so many other ones that are really good for this pattern. We've just had quite a few new viscose jerseys come in. This one comes in three nice colorways, nice and colorful, nice large scale print, which I don't think you would worry about matching at all. Um, and then this one is the Purple Jungle Stencil Viscose Jersey Fabric. And we've got that in two other colorways. I think there's a more sort of bluey colorway and then a one that's got one that's got sort of blacks and beiges in it. It's really nice. And then this one is also a viscose jersey as well. Again, it comes in three colorways. I've picked this lovely blue one, so it's a bit more sort of abstract. Um, and then this one is the River Blue Brush Strokes Viscose Jersey Fabric too. So also good for the Georgie dress um, and also good for the named Kilo Wrap dress, which is slowly heading right to the top of my to make list because it is so comfy and good when you're pregnant. Um, and then I've also got some really nice cute new jerseys to show you as well which are a little bit more novelty but they're really nice um, and also we finally restocked this one which is just kind of like a little bit sort of silly but in a fun good way it's the party woof <laughs> fabric which is it's like a really lightweight sweatshirting fabric so it's, it's a bit similar in weight really to the french terry ones but the back of it's brushed so it's just a little bit more cozy on the reverse um, and it would be really good for all your classic sort of jumper patterns. And we do have the off-white ribbing fabric goes really nicely as well with it if you wanted to use that for your neck bands or your cuffs. Um, but yeah, this is back in, by popular demand, this is back in stock. It was one of, <laughs> it was one of those ones that we just got a little bit of in because we tend to get lower quantities of the more sort of novelty fabrics. And when we first got it, people were like going crazy for it. So yeah, we've got it back though. I know all the heart eyes for the dog, right? They're really, really cute. Um, but then brand, brand new. I do also have some nice fun new jerseys too, which I'll show you as well. This one's nice and bright and colourful. Also comes with a navy background. Um, so these will all be in the just arrived section. Now this is the Playtime Pop on off-white cotton jersey fabric. Nice and vibrant and colourful. And then couple more sort of nautical themed ones this is a really nice one um sort of like a sunset on a boat it's similar to the party woof one so it's like a french terry but it's brushed on the back so it's, it's a bit lighter weight than like your typical sort of heavier sweatshirting fabric but it is cozy on the back um and then this is the sunset sales organic cotton sweatshirting fabric um so nice snuggly cozy one 
Um, that would that would also look good, I think, with the off white cuffing too. If you wanted to make a jump out of that, and then again, same weight, nice sailboat one, nautical theme, summer sailboat, organic cotton French terry fleece back fabric, nice and bright, and then this one. Oh, something's just scratched that. Um, this one is just a regular cotton cotton jersey, so more like a sort of t-shirt weight. Um, it's good for kids clothes or like nice little t-shirts or vests and it comes in a lighter blue colourway as well so it's just some nice fun clouds on that one and then finally this one also comes in I think it's in a more sort of pinky colourway as well and um, these little animals this is the collage zoo cotton jersey fabric so again more like a sort of t-shirt weight so some nice fun more novelty jerseys there and um, let me just check I haven't missed any of your questions i've also made the georgie dress but i find it pulls a lot at the side seam where the wrap meets the side maybe need longer elastic yeah maybe could be um what was the pattern name of the dungarees you're wearing so it's the yanta the helen's closet yanta um, mine has arrived looking forward to make it great what would be an easy pattern to do a full bust adjustment on anything that's just got like a single bust dart and isn't like particularly fitted really anywhere else is going to be easiest to do it on. Um, I've ordered some of your magenta blooms viscose linen to make fabric godmother peony dress lovely. I've made a twelve, but the back neckline is too big. Please, can you offer some advice? Um, if it, if it's sort of gaping, I want. Has it got darts at the back neckline? I wonder if you could maybe make the darts a little bit bigger. Or just make the seam allowance where the zip is and sort of taper it up so that the seam allowance is just a little bit bigger near the top of the neckline and that would sort of help to bring it in. Um, okay, so let me check what else is on my list to show you. So yeah, that is the kits and that's what I'm wearing. And then also coming up next week, if you are able to come and visit us at the shop, we've got our Lutterloo demonstration next week. Um, on Wednesday we've still got six tickets left for that um, and we are it's, it's like details TBC but we are going to see if we can try and sort of share something online to do with that as well it don't it won't be live and um, but it might be that we can we, we can share some details with you online about that after the event for those of you that can't make it or you may be too far to travel um, and then what else is on my list to tell you so i've also yes i've shown you the new fabrics we do also have a couple of new patterns as well the new closet core pajama pattern is now in the just arrived section that looks really nice that's the fran pajamas and then we've also got the chalk and notch den jacket as well just to add to the jacket mix and repertoire so many lovely jackets out there now um okay the next the next question was, okay, somebody also asked, which I'll just answer now, seeing as it's on my list. Will somebody be taking over these lovely videos while you're off with the little one? Um, to be honest, I don't know yet. I've not really worked that out. I mean, I continue, I plan to continue keep doing them until I literally like really can't anymore. Um, and then, yeah, I don't actually know yet, but there's obviously gonna be a period of time I'm like definitely not going to be able to and then it might start to be like quite uh unpredictable when I, when I can actually do them obviously like fixed you know babies don't work to the Instagram weekly eight o'clock schedule um so maybe maybe for a bit I'll have to do like a sort of pre maybe like a kind of pre-recorded thing um so yeah TBC on that one um, okay, then I've also got some comments and responses and things from the recording that I put on YouTube of things that we were talking about last week. Somebody was asking about the fold over elastic. So somebody suggested that they've seen a site called Bra Builders that has a rainbow fold over elastic for lingerie making. I'm sure other lingerie suppliers have it. I've seen it used as binding slash shoulder straps on a tank top by Tomcat Stitchery here on YouTube. I've, I've, I've brought some over this time of the fold over elastic. So it might be hard to see it in the camera, but it's basically got like a little crease down the middle and you just, you just like fold it over the edge of your fabric like that. 
and then sew it on so your fabric's kind of sandwiched in between with a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch and then it kind of makes like the edging of your pants or whatever it is you're making um so yeah that is the fold over elastic um and then we were also talking so that there was another question last week that was about um getting i think it was maybe like getting back pain or achy shoulders or something when you're sewing um and then we were having lots of chats about you know posture and the right seat and all of that sort of thing we had quite a few feedback points on that as well other other contributions from youtube um, somebody who's a physio that specializes in er ergonomics and she recommends that people use a proper adjustable office chair with a decent height backrest and it needs to be adjustable in height because if the chair is too low you'll be hun hunching your shoulders up to reach your sewing machine and um, yeah there there is there is some more to that response as well which you can it's just it's just on public view, like in the comments of the recording of the of um, last week's video. And then also on the pedal moving side uh, side of things, because we were talking about the pedal sort of sliding away as you sew, put a bit of non-slip fabric underneath it. I found mine in Amazon. Um, and then, yeah, another recommendation for the Love to Sew podcast on sewing ergonomics, which I started to listen to. I'm going to confess I'm actually not very good at listening to podcasts because I somehow can't hold concentration. Um, but the start that I listened to was very interesting. So if you if you do actually listen to podcasts, I would definitely check that out. That's the Love to Soul podcast episode. Um, so, so yeah. The, then, okay. I'm going to catch up on your comments here and then I'm going to come back to the other questions. Um how would you do a full bust adjustment in the Georgie? I need to add an extra two inches. I'd have to I'd have to look that one up. I don't know that off the top of my head, sorry. I have really narrow shoulders, so I am likely to need to adjust the kit patterns for this. Will these patterns lend themselves to easy adjustment or would you recommend a toile? It depends how much of an adjustment you're doing, really. Um you know, it's 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 always gonna be like more reliable to do a toile first because then you can test what you're doing without cutting into the actual fabric. What are the Luther Low patterns? I heard a lot about them, but I don't know what they are. It's basically like a system where you take your body measurements and then you end up drawing a pattern that's like specific to your measurements. And um, that's like a very kind of headline summary. <laughs> Um, but we'll we'll share more about it once we've had the demonstration and everything and then we've got a little bit of content around that. Um, so suggesting bring the baby. I mean, I feel like the novelty of that might wear off quite quickly, but um, thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> um, okay, Megan's suggesting that the cocoa is really easy to adjust. That's good to know. Um, okay, so... Um, the other question that we had last week was about the Mitchell trousers and using um, using a, a stretch fabric to make them. Um, and what somebody suggested that they'd, that they'd done is basically just use a different fabric for the facing that's on the inside. So if you're using a fabric for the main fabric that's got a bit of a stretch in it, you could use a different fabric for the facing that's not got stretch and then that will help to stabilize it as well. Um, and then this this lady said that she'd made her Mitchells out of a fairly weighty denim. So I used a much lighter chambray for the facing and the zip guard to reduce the bulk and it worked really well. Um, so, so yeah, hopefully that helps. And then somebody was also asking about putting anything up about the custom made mannequins. Um, so that is the other de demonstration that we've got. Um, oh, I can't remember when that is now. Is that in March? Yeah, it's at the beginning of March and um, that's on a Saturday. So you can come and see how they scan your body and make a, a mannequin, a mimicwin, um, that is exactly like your body. But I am doing like a live Q&A with them. That is next week, I believe, on Thursday. Um, so you'll be able to watch that as well and kind of find out a little bit, a little bit more about it there. Um, Okay, I'm basically 27 inches under bust all the way down to my waist and not broad shouldered above. Okie doke. Um, you need to spend time with your newborn. I'm sure we will manage. 
but we will definitely miss you. That is very kind, thank you. Um, okay, we had I had another question that was about bust measurements and fitting and things. If the high bust measurement is only half to an inch smaller than the full bust, but the chest, as in the under bust measurement, is five to six inches smaller than the full bust, what adjustments would you do? In other words, dressmaker's cup size is barely anything, but normal cup size is about an E. Is this just a broad shoulder adjustment? I've checked in most patterns, I have used full bust measurements rather than high bust or both. I hope that makes sense. To be honest, it's, it's quite hard to picture um, in that scenario. And it sounds like maybe you could maybe having some sort of more personalized fitting advice with somebody might kind of help. I mean, the, the, main, the main thing to remember with the dressmaker's cup size is, is that the cup size of your bra is definitely not, probably not going to correspond to what your dressmaker's cup size is. So try not to, try not to worry too much about what your bra size, bra cup size is when you're working out your dressmaker's cup size, because they are different. Although confusingly, they're labeled with A, B, C, D, etc., which is the same, which I can appreciate is confusing. Um, but, w but I do have a video and a blog post that's about where you're taking your measurements. Um, Cause that would, you know, if, if, if I was like, if I was kind of helping somebody, you know, and they were in front of me or whatever, with that kind of thing, the first thing I'd be doing is just, just checking all of the measurements that, that yeah, they were in the right place. Um, sorry, I can't be more specific. It is quite a, quite a, a, a specific question. Um, but, but yeah. The, the headline there is that dressmaker's cup size is not gonna correspond to your bra cup size. Okay, the next question was, when will the scissors with the serrated blade be coming back in stock? That's the prim ones that we stock. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure because at the moment there is like a nationwide prim shortage, delivery shortage of stock. Um, they're having some issues at, at, a, at a new warehouse um, in Germany, unfortunately. And there's like not a lot I can do to control that. <laughs> we have like loads of stuff on back order and I'm waiting for so many things to come in, but I'm just not really getting any in information about when that'll be. Um, I mean, I hope it'll be soon, but I'm really sorry. I don't know, it's kind of out of my control at the moment, but if you've signed up for a stock notification on the website, you know, we can let you know as soon as they are back again. Um, Okay, the next question was, do you have any tips on reducing the ankle slash end width of wide leg trousers like the Mitchells? So really, you just need to make sure that you're taking the same from all the seams. And also Closet Core do have a blog post about it. So if you search for tapered leg Jenny hack, then you'll find it. So the Jenny, the Closet Core Jenny is like a wide leg trouser pattern. Um, actually, it's like over Jenny overalls they're called, but there's a trouser version of it as well. Um, so that would sort of explain it in the kind of context of something too. Okay, the next question was, any tips for replacing an elasticated waistband with a sheared one, for example, on the next dress? So I was having a look at the next dress, that's the closet core one, and it has an elastic channel at the waist, which you basically create by, so you sew the bodice and the skirt together, and then you sew again, like a bit further away, and then that gives you the channel. I'm pretty sure that's what you do. Let me just check. Yeah, and then you kind of fold it back on itself and basically it makes the channel. Now, obviously you wouldn't need to do that if you were doing shearing because there would be too much bulk there. But because it's got, because the next has got that sort of button section there, I was thinking what you might, but then you it might be that you want the, the shearing there, but you're not gonna be able to do shearing where you've got that sort of bit there. What I would, maybe think about doing is shortening the bodice but then lengthening the skirt by the same amount if that makes sense and then then basically it means that you can do your shearing a bit higher and then all your lines of shearing would kind of effectively end up sort of sitting like above and a low above and below a little bit of where the elastic casing actually is um 
so so yeah that was what i was thinking on that one it's not totally straightforward somebody's actually asked a question about shearing patterns later on so i'll come back to that because i can't actually find it at the moment because i've got so many questions tonight and um, but yes yeah, someone else is also asking about she she patterns dress patterns that have got shearing at the waist so it might be maybe you want to look at them as well and then you don't have to mess about with altering that and um, there's quite a few comments coming in here that the fit for real people book is really good for working out what kind of adjustment you need to make the lady who asked about bust slash cup size yeah i would agree it is really good it's got lots of nice simple diagrams that help you sort of visualize it I've seen a hack of the Pauline dress with the back replaced by a sheared back. How do you calculate the size of the back piece? Um, I'd need to have a look at what the Pauline dress was. I'm sorry, I don't know that one off the top of my head. Does ordering both this kits this month delay dispatch? Reading some people have received, but I haven't yet. I'm sure it's on its way. I'm just impatient. So we, we always have a two week shipping window for the kits. You always need to bear that in mind when you order a kit that actually it's, well, it's like two and a half weeks, really. And we try really, really hard to ship them sooner. But if you order, if you order two kits or if you order a kit with something else, it takes us longer to ship that out than if somebody just orders one kit. So that's that's why you'll see that some people will get a single kit a lot quicker because we start shipping them on the Wednesday that they get released. And we and we try and ship them as quickly as we can and within that then two and a half week window and the quickest way we can do that is send all the single ones out first because it clears space to then get ones where we have to get multiple things together so it is on its way but do generally bear in mind that for the sewing society kits there is a two and a half week window which i'm, I'm going to be honest we actually very rarely ever get to that like the kits are usually always sent much much earlier in that two two and a half week window but we literally have hundreds to send out and i have to mitigate against like somebody being off sick or there being some other kind of delay in getting them shipped out and um, so so it's it's best to bear in mind when you order a kit that it could take a couple of weeks to come and if it comes any sooner then that's really exciting so i'm sorry that i know it must be hard when you see other people getting theirs but that's the reason why and um, can anyone recommend a jumpsuit pattern with a zip front and short sleeves please the closet core blanca is is quite a popular one you can definitely customize the sleeves on that do you sew according to your body measurements or your finished measurements so typically i would say that when you're first choosing a size for for a sewing pattern and i do have a blog and video that is all about that as well is that you would take your body measurements you would look at the body measurement chart um, that comes with the pattern and then that would help you to sort of see what what size or sizes I mean it's likely that you're not going to be falling into one size and um, that 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 would be your starting point and once you've done that then you would look at the finished garment measurements and depending on the fit or the style of the garment that can then help to influence what size you choose to make so for example say your say your bust and your waist were fitting into one size but your hips were fitting into another size but you were making a dress like the closet core mix that i was showing you earlier that's got a very gathered waist and actually there's enough ease in the hip that you don't really need to make a different size for that and um, then it means you could just make a straight size so that's why it's, you're always going to take into consideration both but my, my personal feeling is the starting point would always be your body measurements and um, yet someone else is suggesting the closet core blanca for the optional zip front and the short sleeves and um, the closet core pauline dress has a cut out back ah yeah okay that one um I mean, what what I've done before when I've done like a, 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 a it was a top actually with a sheared back is because you don't I suppose you don't totally know like how how much the fabric is kind of going to gather with the shearing. And that can also be affected by like how tightly you wind the bobbin of the elastic and everything is that when I made my pan over the back of my top when I did my shearing thing, it basically ended up like a bit bigger than what I knew I needed and that but it, because it was a rectangle then I just sort of I just kept trying it on and then I kept sewing it in until the tightness of the elastic was sort of where I wanted it so so yeah 
I guess my headline advice there is sort of make your shearing panel a bit bigger than you think you'll need it and then it's easy to sort of cut it down. Um, okay, so back to where I was here. How did, where did I get up to here? Okay, I find, so the next question was, I find sewing curves hard, especially in viscose, as I veer off the intended line. Any tips? Um, generally go nice and slow and practice. Definitely practice will help make it better. Um, and then just th have a think about where you're looking as well when you when you come to sew. Because if you're looking at the actual needle and where the needle goes into the fabric all the time, then you're going to kind of miss like lining the fabric up because by the time the needle is actually going into the fabric, you can't really change where it is. You kind of want to have your eye like a bit further down, like where you're actually feeding the fabric in to the machine in relation to the foot of the machine. You need to be looking there really so that if you are starting to veer off, you've still got time to do something about it. Um, and that's obviously coordinating it with the speed that you're actually sewing it. But because viscose is very slippery and it moves around a lot, then also just making sure that the fabric is like nice and relaxed and it's there's not any sort of tension or it's not like falling onto your lap as you sew. So then, because that can mean that the machine's trying to sort of drag it or kind of pull it up. What you might find is just help, what you might find helps is just pushing the machine back from the table that you're working on a little bit so that the project can actually sit on there rather than hanging off the table and that will help to keep it relaxed so then it's easier to sort of feed it through but but practice practice is definitely going to make it easier and um, I also go off course on curves I sometimes draw on the seam line onto tricky areas so I have something clear to follow yeah that can definitely help as well and um, or what what you could do is also just maybe sew it with a longer stitch length first and then you'll know that if you're then happy with it you can just sew that sew over that again or if you're not happy with it then obviously it's a longer stitch length so it's easier to to take it out try basting the tricky seam lines yet yeah, another good tip thank you um Okay, so the next question was, when doing a high round back slash forward shoulder adjustment, should I move the back and front sleeve notches? I find the sleeve doesn't feel right when moving the shoulder seam. Um, so if you're, doing, if you're doing a high round back or forward shoulder adjustment, it's basically where you end up like moving that shoulder seam forward a bit. So I would say, trying to think about it and like visualize it in 3d i would say that i don't think you need to move these notches it's just that sleeve head notch you'll need to move because if you've moved because typically that sleeve head notch matches the shoulder seam doesn't it so then if you've moved that forward then you'd have to move the notch on the sleeve head forward by the same amount so that that's matching up and then hopefully that should make it feel a bit better because it because if you move the shoulder seam forward, but then you don't, it, but then you're still matching that notch up with where your new position of your shoulder seam is. Then obviously it's then very tight there, and then it's going to be too baggy there. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. So the next question was, I've got some viscose jersey mix. And I would like to know, have you got any tips on how to sew, wash and also press? This will be my first time sewing with jersey fabric. I think it depends how experienced you are generally in, so in dressmaking and how confident you are. But for a first jersey project, viscose jersey is probably not the, like, the first thing I would suggest to, to pick. Just because it does slip around a lot um, and it moves around a lot. Something more stable like a cotton jersey or a sweatshirting or a French... French Terry or a, a Ponty Roma, they're all much easier fabric, jersey fabrics to work with for the first time you're working with stretch. But if you're, if you're like, you know, got your eye set on the viscose jersey, you want to do it, you know, certainly by all means, don't let me stop you. Um, in terms of, in terms of washing it, I would just wash it at 30 degrees, try to dry it as flat as you can so it doesn't inadvertently stretch out as you, as, it, as it's drying. Um, and then when you come to sew it, you need to use a stretch. Your seams need to be able to stretch. So the two choices are either use the Gutterman Mariflex stretchy thread, and then you can use a straight seam, 
or you can use regular thread, but you need to use a stretch stitch, so either a zigzag or some kind of other stretch stitch on your sewing machine or an overlocker that will also stretch. And then in terms of pressing it, you just make sure you've got water in your iron. So steam's generated, probably don't have it at its highest setting, maybe more like sort of medium setting, test, test it on some scraps to make sure, but I mean, it's generally pretty easy to press. Um, um, so yeah, that's it. Um, okay, somebody's suggesting I use washable quilters tape for viscose jersey to stop slippage. That's a good tip. Twig and tail have a good tutorial and forward shoulder adjustment, including how to alter the sleeve. Excellent suggestion. I've not seen that one. So it, the comment actually says twig and take, but I'm presuming it's maybe twig and tail. Um, easy to do typos in these comments. Um, okay, the next question was, Lauren, can you please explain the difference between cotton lawn and cotton poplin? So really, cotton lawn is much, much thinner and lighter weight um, and it'll sort of, it'll kind of float and move around a little bit more than cotton poplin which tends to be a bit thicker and a little bit stiffer and just hold its structure and shape a little bit more. Both are really easy to work with, they're both really easy to press as well and when you like feel them, like when you look really close, basically the threads that have woven the cotton lawn are much much thinner and they tend to be woven very densely together. So cotton lawn does tend to be quite a dense fabric, but because the threads are so, so thin and fine, it gives a very, very soft, kind of buttery, yeah, like floaty, lightweight fabric. Whereas the threads that have woven cotton poplin, those threads themselves tend to be thicker, which ultimately just results in like a thicker, sort of heavier fabric that does have more body and structure to it. Um, so so yeah that's the that's the main differences between them um okay so the next ones that i'm gonna i feel like i've still got a lot to answer but some of them are pattern recommendations hopefully i can still get to the end okay could i have some fabric recommendations for the sew over at ava skirt classic nice simple a-line skirt i like your wools but i would need to figure out how they wash I mean, generally on the topic, I don't want to go to, into it in detail because I don't think the question is specifically about this, but generally on the topic of washing wools, you know, it depends, depends how much wool is in it for a start. You can wash some wools, but it depends on, it depends on the weave of the wool and how it's been like pre-treated. Um, but, you know, typically wools will shrink when you wash them, even if you wash them in a wool wash. It tends to be the kind of looser weave ones um, or where, where like the wool threads or like fibres are a bit sort of thicker and chunkier then they tend to kind of shrink a bit more because when you put water and soap into wool you know it does kind of fell and it gets you know it shrinks um, but if you've got if you've got a fabric that's got very high content of wool or is 100% wool um, then you'll generally find that you don't really have to clean it as much as you would have to clean something else because it's almost like it's, it's like a little bit self-cleaning in a way um, like you can just spot clean it you can just air like air it out if it's got you know if you want to sort of freshen it up a little bit you don't really need to like wash it and launder it like you would other stuff or or certainly anything that's got synthetics in it because it just won't it won't smell like other fabric smell because wool just doesn't um and if and if you're making the ava skirt what you could do is is have like a lip if you're making an ava skirt out of wool i would definitely suggest lining it i do have a blog post and video on that um and in, in which case, you know, the, the wool's not like touching you, your body anyway. Um, and I would line it in like a nice breathable um, viscose lining or, or cupro or something. Um, something sort of nice and slippery. Or what you could do is make the Ava skirt and then have like a slip underneath that you could then, and you could wash that. So I do have some wools to show you that I think would, would be nice for it. And um, they're all sort of like hair, they're all kind of herringbone style ones. Um, this one here, which is going to make the light go all kind of funny. This is the olive fleck wool fabric and it is 100% wool. And it's, yeah, it's like a sort of nice olivey colour, but it's got little flecks of lots of other colours in it as well. It's really nice. And then we've got this nice red one here. This is the brick herringbone wool fabric. 
um, which again is is got other sort of tones of colour in it. So although on the on the face of it, it looks like quite a plain fabric, it does actually have some nice sort of lighter kind of orangey tones as well. Um, and then we've got this gorgeous nice pink one. It's probably my favourite because I just like anything pink. Cerise herringbone wool fabric. And again, it's 100% wool as well. It's got a bit more of a thicker herringbone weave to it. But again, lots of nice shades and textures in that. Um, it all, the, the Ava skirt also looks nice in a corduroy. It's another good option too. We've got this nice chunky one. This is the teal chunky cotton corduroy fabric. Um, and it looks it looks really nice in a corduroy as well. Um, so, so yeah, a few suggestions there for the popular Ava skirt. Okay, the next question was for the ready to sew partner overalls. The pattern calls for three to six percent stretch. Do you think it'd matter if I ha if the fabric had more stretch than that? Also, please could you talk about different types of denim? I have no feel for what is heavy slash light. I do have, it's quite an old blog post, but still totally relevant. It's all about understanding different denims. So I've got a blog post and a video that's on that. Um, and the link to that will be in like the sort of roundup blog post that I do for this video. Um, so you can you can definitely check that out as well. But just to give like a brief sort of overview, um, denim can be classified in different ways. Sometimes it's classified in ounces. Um, and just to give you like an example of the range, like a, like a four ounce denim would be pretty lightweight. Um, that would be more something you'd make like a sort of light shirt in or like a shirt dress. Um, and then by the time you're making like jeans and maybe sort of like dungarees or a pinafore dress or something or kind of overalls, then you're going to be more you're going to be more towards maybe like the eight, nine, ten ounce. And then but it can go up to I think the heaviest we've ever had is 14 ounce, which is pretty stiff, like. If you had if you had trousers that were 14 ounce, they might kind of stand up on their own a little bit. You know, it would take a lot to sort of break them in. Um, but usually maybe round about like the 11, 12 ounce range is, is, is typically quite good for jeans and probably on the whole, like the most that you would want to go for without them getting like really stiff and heavy. So hopefully that just gives some context to the type of weights as well. But in answer to the first part of your question, no, I don't think it would matter if, the fabric did have more than three to six percent stretch and um, from looking at the style of the garment I don't think it would really be affected if the fabric was a bit more stretchy than that um, okay so the next question was my mum wants to wear a dress to a garden party at Buckingham Palace that sounds very fancy any pattern recommendations which aren't too fitted as we will have minimal minimal opportunities to fit slash try on and to suit a 75 year old um, so I think the closet core next that I was showing earlier is really nice. It looks really, really lovely. It's got like nice details in it. And because it's got an elasticated waist, it's pretty easy to fit as well. I mean, in theory, you could even just put the elastic in, but not totally sew up the casing at the back. And your mum could just tighten it with tighten the elastic with a safety pin if she wanted it a little bit tighter. Um, so that's definitely one that would be, you know, it's 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 like quite loose and sort of flowy anyway, and a beautiful viscose fabric. It's lovely, like the be happy blooms that we've got there. So I think that's a good option. And the closet core Elodie as well, it's you know, it's 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 really nice and can be nice for like a more sort of formal occasion too. And it's, it is more fitted at the waist. So that's probably like the only sort of one area where, you know, you would you would want it to fit a little bit more, but it has a wrap dress. So, you know, if it's like a little bit out, obviously you can just like wrap it a little bit tighter. It's probably gonna be fine. Um, so, so yeah, they, they were my two suggestions there that I think would be nice. Okay, the next one was, a, we're onto the, back onto the shearing. Again, shearing elastic recommendations for a long dress long or short sleeve options with a sheared bodice so fold line do actually have like a roundup blog post of various sheared ones but the dresses that i saw in there that looked good i think looked good in answer to this question was the deo dress from sewing patterns by mason and then the asha dress which is a Tsuti patterns one and then the Sophia dress and top, which is a victory patterns one. So a few suggestions there. They all looked really nice. Um, 
Okay, the next, what somebody's asked here, some corduroy, corduroy I bought from another shop shed its coloured fluff in the dryer. Does that mean it's bad quality corduroy? I think not necessarily. Um, I probably personally wouldn't really, wouldn't really put corduroy in a dryer because it is quite lofty and like it, it naturally is going to kind of shed a little bit. And generally when you put stuff in a dryer, any kind of fabric, it will always slowly over time take the body out of the fabric because just because of the, the heat and the tumbling, you know, it does like draw. That's why you get all that fluff and the sort of the uh, kind of vent thing of your tumble dryer, isn't it? Because that's like actually part of the clothes just come, coming apart. Um, so not necessarily, and it also depends whether you'd you'd like overlock the, the cut edges or not too, because they, they can just like fray quite easily. Um, so not necessarily. Um, it's telling the buttons, Mabel dress is sheared. Uh, yep, excellent suggestion. Lavina dress, sew me something. Um, Currently sewing the muted mauve fur backed sweat into a mylen sweater. Plenty of fluff here, I can imagine. Um, I'm after an easy summer dress pattern. The Telling the Buttons lot is pretty easy. I've made that as a nice summer dress and it, it looks really good. It's nice and easy. Um, okay, the next question was, do you have any kids sweater patterns so that I can be matchy matchy with the Jara? Um, I've got a few suggestions. The Ikati Jasmine Jumper, which is out of stock at the moment, but um it'll be coming back in again soon and then there's also the paper pattern scissors aspen which is a, a pdf pattern which we have on our website you can get the pdf pattern and the printouts as well on our website too and they they're nice cute ones nice little jumper ones um okay the next question was postnatal loungewear pattern and soft fabric please something size forgiving so i was thinking that either the the bamboo jersey which is this one here or the tensile jersey would be really good because they're nice and stretchy they're very lightweight they're very soft and and yeah they're just they're just going to be like super comfy to wear so this one is that com comes in various colors this particular one is the great bamboo jersey fabric and the bamboo element of it just makes it quite sort of floppy and drapey which is really nice it feels really soft too and then this one which is the tensile jersey um it is it's 95 tensile and five percent elastane again comes in lots of colors and this particular one is the dahlia pink tensile medal jersey fabric um, but it's very floppy and very lightweight and yeah, just really, really comfy. So I was thinking the named Oslo pants or trousers, which are basically just like a really simple, like elasticated waist trouser pattern. Um, so I thought, you know, something like that would be good. And then also the, t the Tilly and the Buttons Juno pajamas, which is actually in one of our books, I think it's in our stretch book. And um, they're just like, I think they're just like an elasticated waist trouser as well. So they'd be, you know, they'd be nice and easy. The fabric's really lightweight um, and nice and stretchy and just comfy to wear. So I think that would be a good combination for that one. Um, okay, the next question was fabric for a below the Kuai Tui pinafore pattern, which is like a really cute pinafore pattern for kids that's got like a gathered skirt and then like a little pinafore bit it looks really nice and um, lots of different options for that we could do the enzyme linen which is the same as what i've got on here and um, the enzyme linen mix comes in lots of different colors and then this one looked a bit more similar to what was in the sample picture that i looked at this is the washed peppermint yarn dyed linen fabric so it's got that bit more of a sort of chambray appearance to it because one of one way of threads is white and the other is peppermint um or the serona linen would also be really good as well it's a bit lighter weight um but it you know it, ha it has nice drape and texture to it and would be good for that as well and then also i think cotton gauze would be really cute We've had more of this strawberry come back in. I think that would be really sweet. Um, this is the Strawberry Fields Embroidered Cotton Double Gauze Fabric, which is really nice. Um, okay, so the next one was, I'm about to make the French poetry 
Pilates dress, but I'm stuck between viscose versus cotton. Opinion, please. So this one has like it had gathers at the shoulder and then sort of came in like a v-neck. I think there were some buttons and then like a sort of waistline that was kind of shaped, but then very gathered into the skirt. My personal preference would definitely be viscose for that because I think it will just drape and hang a lot, lot better. Um, so, so I would definitely go for viscose. I think you'll get a much more sort of flowy, elegant dress in that style. Um, okay, what's the best jumper slash sweater pattern to use with the Marl knit fabric? That's the Marl knit fabric here. We have it in lots of colours. It does actually look like it's been knitted. Um, I think probably my personal preference on this one would be the toaster version too, because you've not got any neck bands or hem bands or anything with that. Um, I think that would look really nice. So that's my suggestion for that one. Um, then we've got, I'm totally new to sewing. I've just learned how to use a machine where to start for a clothes pattern. Um, so the Tilly and the Buttons Jamie PJs or the Stevie Top are good ones because they are their instructions are good and it means that you're going to get to learn like the terminology that's used in dressmaking and like the shape of the pattern pieces. Um, I mean, there's loads of different ones. I get variations of this question a lot. Um, and that because there's also patterns that you can get that come with like online courses as well. So for example, the Closet Core um, Celio slash your skirt, which is just like a simple top and a skirt pattern, and that is also part can be part of an online course as well. So something like that might might sort of help. I suppose it depends how much extra kind of support you wanted, um, with it all. Okay, the next one was linen fabric, please, for the Tusuti Ophelia dress. Um, I didn't actually make a note of what this looked like again, but I think it's like a sort of sundress pattern with buttons all down the front. I think the enzyme linen, which is the one I'm, the enzyme linen mix, which is the one I'm wearing for this one here, would be good for that. I think you want some kind of structure for that kind of dress, and the en the enzyme the enzyme linen is good, or the rami fabric, um, would be another good option. Okay, the next one was fabric please for a wearable toile of the Mitchell trousers, lighter in weight, but not rami. Um, so if you wanted lighter in weight than rami, the Serona linen. Is a good option i think that would be nice you can you can do the, the mitchells in lots of different fabrics it depends just depends how much structure you want to have them or the enzyme linen or the cotton twill um which is this one here so the cotton twill and the enzyme linen are generally going to have more structure to them but they're not, you know i wouldn't i wouldn't say that they're like heavy weight or anything um probably this one's in terms of weight is probably more closest to the rami the enzyme linen's a bit lighter and then the serone is even lighter than that so yeah depends what sort of look do you want you want to go for um and then i've got do you have any fabric for joggers to match the sage cocoa top um i've got this one here which is like fleece back sweatshirting it's the pine recycled cotton fleece back sweatshirt fabric and um, so it's got a nice snuggly cozy back so yeah, there's that one. And then do you have any stretch fabric suitable for smart trousers as opposed to PJ bottoms? I, I wasn't totally sure what you were pitching here. Maybe like a Ponte Roma could work, but we don't, we tend not to sell much of that. Um, or a, you could use the stretch velvet. Um, we had, a, a th I think we might have some of the tan colourway of this one left as well. This is a cotton stretch velvet. It's really, really stretchy. And we use this in the kit with the um, Jali Patterns Eleanor trousers. And they look pretty smart and they're really comfy because they're nice and stretchy. So that's definitely a, a nice, smarter, stretchy fabric combination. Um, okay, the next one was a denim fabric recommendation to make a denim shirt dress. Please, more on the heavier side. I think, I wouldn't say this is too heavy, but you know, fairly. Um, I think this would make a lovely denim shirt dress. This is the Indigo Combed Cotton Chambray Fabric, 100% cotton. And it's just, I think it's got like a nice, ni a, a nice mix of it being structured, but not too stiff and it'd be very crisp. It would press really nicely into a shirt dress. 
Um, okay, and then I think I've just got two left, so I will try and finish off them and then catch up on any other questions that are here. So if there is anything else you want to ask me, just now let me know. Um, I saw some fabric on your website. Can you show me them together? So it was the Midnight. So it was the Midnight Blooms Poplin and then also the Raspberry Viscose Linen. We don't have any of the Raspberry Viscose Linen, but I do have this one, which is Pink Sorby. Um, and I think they do look nice together. So this is the, this one's the Midnight Blooms Cotton Poplin one. Yeah, I think that looks like a nice outfit in the making there. Um, and then the last question was about recommendations for patterns for postpartum. I'm expecting my third baby. Um, so, and then it was, do you have any favorite patterns or hacks to make things nursing friendly? Um, I know button down button downs work, but I honestly don't have the time energy to iron with a newborn as I don't like wearing non-iron shirts. What do you think? My personal preference in the past has been like the oversized baggy situation with a layer underneath so that you can do the lift method. So I tend not to like open up this way. I tend to open up this way. Um, so I'll, I'll like wear a lot of vest tops underneath or I'll either make them or I have bought like nursing friendly vest tops from Jojo Mom and Baby before um, and then just worn my regular clothes which a lot of them are kind of loose anyway. Um, like Closet Core Ebony is a really nice top. It's nice and swishy, but it's very A-line. So it's really easy to like move around and lift up. Um, or, or yeah, I will wear shirts and then lift them up as well. Or yeah, just any kind of like looser top. And um, the Merchant of Mills Ellsworth is another one that I kind of lift up. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my preference. Um, Okay, so let's see what other things I've missed here. Yeah, someone else was recommending the Victory Patterns Sophia Dress and Top for the sheared bodice. Um, sorry if I've missed this, but what is the grey long line cardigan behind you in the window and what is the fabric, please? It's the named Patterns Esme Cardigan and it's in the Viscose Blended Knit Fabric, which I don't think we've got that exact colour, but we do have some other colours left. We've got a really nice mint colourway that came in not that long ago. Um, so yeah, it's the named Esme Cardigan. Um, somebody suggesting the Stevie for beginners. Do you have to pre-wash the pink knit as I bought some from you before Christmas? Um, what's the composition of it again? Yeah, I pro I probably would. It's got a little bit of wool in it. Um so I, I I I think probably if you just washed it on a wool wash, it should be fine. Um so yeah, that's what I would probably do if I was doing it. Um but which shirt dress so many to choose from, but it's difficult to find a simple one. Um yeah, I'm I can't I can't remember any sorry, I can't remember any shirt dress patterns off the top of my head that are quite simple. Um, I'd need to and, and let okay the, the telling the buttons rose is a nice shirt dress yeah that is a nice shirt dress it's a bit more fitted there's more kind of panels in that one Um, I guess that's not too simple I mean I guess the other option is to have a shirt and lengthen it and then you could add a nice belt Um, yeah the telling the buttons Lyra that that's a shirt dress but then it's like gathered at the waistline and then gathered into the skirt so it depends whether you want the shirt like all the way down the bottom or not um but yeah i can i can add that to my list for next week and see if i can find some some simple ones the um green line i've got one that i made years ago but it's pretty simple in the in the button placket goes all the way down to the bottom um, the assembly line oversized shirt is just a long normal shirt. Yeah, that sounds that sounds perfect to be quite easy. The sew over at Alex or the ZD blouse is also a dress. Um, what about the Cali? Yeah, that's another good one. Thanks everyone. I just I'm struggling at the moment to have these things off the top of my head. You know how it gets. Um, the Archer shirt dress by Green Line. I think the art. I think the, the Archer shirt is just a shirt. I mean, you could definitely lengthen that though. I think it's the older. Is it the older green line? It's actually like a dress. 
pattern scout birdie shorter dress thanks everyone lots of nice suggestions there um okay so that brings me to the end of my questions but thank you everybody for your input and watching and listening and um, if you missed the beginning you can always watch it back on instagram here and then it will be up on the youtube channel too and then you can check out the i've also started doing a blog post that goes with the recording of the live as well just that links some of the stuff that we've been talking about um but if you're ever looking for anything or you like you need any help with anything then you can always just drop us an email and the gng team and i are always more than happy to help if you generally if you want like a quick answer to something then usually emailing's better just because it it can be hard to respond like immediately quickly all the time on various different social platforms but because with the um the email you know the, like general email inquiries like you know the team are generally monitoring that six days a week so it's a bit easier to um keep on top of responses there and um, thanks have a nice cup of tea i actually um, I'm going to be making the next Sewing Society video after the live tonight, which is exciting. Um, I w I'll, I'll give you some hints ahead of that, um, even though the last one's just been out. So obviously we had the Coco and the, and the Georgie dress, which are both jersey for February. But, um, and you know, generally like jersey is quite easy to sew with and yeah nice and nice and comfy um but yeah our, the next kits are definitely more involved and there's like a lot more to them lots of bits Um, yeah i think that's all i'm gonna say for now i know you want more tips every week and more um hints every week anyway so i'll think of some more good ones um Okay, so yeah, I hope you have a lovely week, everyone, and I'll see you next Monday. <laughs> Bye.